In this video, we're going to continue our work with sequences in series and look at some further questions on recurrence relations. This is question number three. We're told a sequence of terms is defined by the recurrence relation a sub n plus 1 is equal to a sub n divided by 2 minus 2 and a sub 1 is equal to 4p. In part a, we need to find an expression in terms of p for a2, a3 and a4. So if we start off exactly the same way we did before, let n be equal to 1. Substituting in, that's going to give me a2 will be equal to a1 over 2 minus 2. So we've got now that a2 is going to be 4p over 2, which is going to give me 2p minus 2. So that now gives me the second term. If we consider when n is equal to 2, substituting in, we're going to have a3 is going to be equal to a2 divided by 2. Then we're going to subtract 2. So that's going to be 2p divided by 2, which is going to be p minus 1, minus another 2. So that is going to give us now p minus 3. Substituting in n is equal to 3, we will have a4, that will be equal to a3, and that will be divided by 2, minus the 2. So substituting in our expression for a3, that will be p minus 3 over 2, and then we're going to have minus 2. I'm going to leave it in that particular form. We could simplify that if we wanted. It's entirely up to us. If you wanted to write it, you could write this now as P minus 7 over 2. So all I'm doing here is combining the fractions. In part B, it says given A4 is equal to 23, find the value of P. So, if we consider my expression here for A4 is P minus 7 over 2, or P minus 3 over 2 minus 2. So, what we can say then is A4, P minus 7 divided by 2 is going to be equal to 23. So, we're simply now saying that A4 is this value right here, and here's my expression for P. Multiplying both sides by the 2, P minus 7 is going to be equal to 46. Adding the 7 to both sides, P is going to be equal to 53. So we've generated the terms in the sequence by substituting in the values of N. Again, you might not want to write this first line. Do check with your teacher or exam board what's expected. I like doing it just so it shows what we're doing. And then we've gone ahead and solved a question based on a given term in the sequence and its numeric value. OK, question four. A sequence of terms is defined by the recurrence relation a sub n plus 1 is equal to 2 a sub n minus 1 with a sub 1 equal to p. In part a, we need to find an expression, uh, an expression in terms of p for a2, a3 and a4. Exactly the same. When n is equal to 1, we will have now a2, substituting in 1 here, will be 2a1 minus 1. So that's going to give us two lots of a1, so that's going to be 2p minus 1. When n is equal to 2, we're going to have now a3, well that's going to be two lots of a2 minus 1. So that's going to be two lots of 2p minus 1. And then we're going to subtract 1, which is going to give us 4p minus 3. If we now consider when n is equal to 3, that gives us a4. We're going to have 2 lots of a3 minus 1, which is going to be 2 lots of 4p minus 3 minus another one, which is going to give me now 8p minus 7. So that gives me my fourth term. That gives me my third term. That gives me my second term, and of course, the first term is just P. In part B, it says, given, now, this is the sum. This is sigma notation, and in later videos, we'll spend more time on it. All this is telling me now is to sum AR from R equals 1 to 4, and it's going to tell me that that is equal to 49. 
So what it's saying is use the recurrence relation here and sub in the values. So what we can say then is the sum from r equals 1 to r is equal to 4 of a r. Well, that is going to be now on here a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4. So we know that a1 is going to be p. We know that a2 is going to be 2p minus 1. So 2p minus 1 plus a3, which is 4p minus 3. And then we're going to get plus a4, which is 8p minus 7. Students sometimes forget to add a1, and that's why I've written it like so. So what we can say is all of this added up. So what have we got? We've got p plus 2p, which is going to be 3p. Then we've got 7p. We've got 15p. I'm writing therefore 15p minus 1 minus 3 minus 7. That's going to give me minus 11 is equal to 49. So that's equal to 49. Add an 11 to both sides. 15p is equal to 60. And p is going to be equal to 4. So I've gone ahead and solved for p by simply summing the force first four terms using this sigma notation. So found the values, plugged them in, solved for p, and that's the question answered. So as stated, when we come on to arithmetic sequences in series, we will look at some more sigma notation, but it's nice and straightforward to solve for p.